This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Good morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Wednesday, Wednesday, September 13th, and it's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I should be your host for the day, as we have a, our Man Down Mashup Wednesday, where we mash two shows together. We mash um, uh, On the Clock with Aaron Green up with um, Guardian Radio AM to have one show where we analyze the news. Now, something pricked my interest when I said, Aaron, I want to talk about this. And Aaron, of course, did some research for me. And I said, Aaron, uh, didn't our Minister of Social, Secu- uh, Social Services mention something about this? So she ran out and said, yeah, she's going to get this newspaper. But this is what I want to point out. And then I'll have Aaron um, continue with that, which she went to re- uh, read out recently. A man who attacked his girlfriend with a hammer. I mean, he bashed her head right in with that hammer. I mean, he wanted to make sure she was disfigured and memed, and he intended to make sure she unlived, died. He wanted to kill her. He bludgeoned her, bludgeoned her face in. He was vexed. He wanted to have that pain. He wanted to show whatever pain he's going through. And he mashed her up. I said it that way because he only got 18 months. 18 months after bashing her head in repeatedly with a hammer. All her face and eye socket. Knock out. You say 18 months? 18 months. What do you think the 18 months is? But go ahead. You tell me. Would like to read from the article. Read from the article. The, the, the headline says, "Is man who attacked girlfriend with hammer gets probation." A man who attacked his now former live-in girlfriend with a hammer during a domestic dispute on Monday sentenced to probation for eighteen Wait, months. Probation? Yes. What? No, see, that's like I can play the devil's advocate because what probation means? Probation means that you don't have to. It's like your sentence is suspended. You don't have to. Be incarcerated, and if you behave, A, and B, follow whatever requirements were put in place for your probation. Like, you may have to go to anger management, or you may have to check in at the station regularly, right? So you're saying, after the man got this hammer Mm -hmm. and pound his girlfriend's head to pulp, I mean, just tell you couldn't recognize him. Let me, let's say what he pled guilty to. Patrick Wallace Jr., 40, pleaded guilty to assault with a dangerous weapon and causing grievous harm at his arraignment before Magistrate Raquel Wims. The court heard that Wallace beat the woman about the body, including her head, causing serious injuries. If Wallace is convicted of any offense during the probationary period, he will be jailed for six months. What? what? He will be jailed for six months if he commits any offense during the probationary period. He'll be jailed for six months. See, when they say any offense, right, to me, that means if you get a ticket for running a stop sign or a red light, if you get a ticket for parking on the sidewalk, right, Any offense, not just a criminal offense, it may be a traffic offense, right? That you will be required 
to serve six months. You'll be jailed for six months. Wallace was ordered to pay a fine of $2,000 in order to avoid spending two months in custody. So a month in custody is only what? way to grant? What did the woman get? The woman who, who faced him mashup. All right. The victim has been granted a protection order by the family court. That's what she got. I don't want one from the, the family court to have security officers. I want a protection order from the police court. I want it from the strike unit court. That's who I want to protect me. That's what she got. Anyway, let me continue. Let's go back earlier. Um, he has to pay a fine of $2,000 in order to avoid spending two months in custody. He also has to pay the victim $4,000 in restitution to avoid spending six months in custody. Additionally, he has to undergo anger management and substance abuse counseling for a period of six months. Failing to complete the anger management courses will result in a default sentence of three months, while failing to complete substance counseling will result in two months in prison. Wallace did not have a lawyer. Sergeant 2257 Mark Wilkinson was the prosecutor. Again, meanwhile, the victim has been granted a protection order by the family court. So he got 18 months probation. So that means within that 18 months, if he commits any offense, he's going to go to jail but only for six months. So let's add that up. That's six months, right? And he's ordered to pay a fine to the court for $2,000. If he doesn't pay that, that's an additional two months. He also has to pay his victim $4,000 in restitution to avoid spending six months in custody. That's another six months. And failing to complete the anger management courses will result in a default sentence of three months, right? So six and six is 12, that's one year, and two and three is five. So that's 17 months. That's a year and five months. So if he decides that he ain't on any of day run and he's not uh, to comply with these Aaron, things. Aaron, he's out, walking up and down. He will only serve 17 months. That's back to the 18 months. So if he breaches the conditions of his probation, of his sentence, he would serve less time than the actual probationary period that he's been put on. This doesn't even speak to him being liable or responsible for any medical needs or plastic surgery needs, reconstructive surgery needs she may have. What $4,000, you could only get seen at doctor's hospital and have a grand for parking. Mm. To pay for parking or the taxi to get there. Because God knows we don't really have affordable medical taxi services. The point is this. Is the sentence ridiculous? Is it satisfactory that for assault with a dangerous weapon and causing grievous harm... Even if, even if it's a plea deal, right? Even if it's a plea deal, is it satisfactory that the convicted person in this instance, and I don't think there's a question of, of, of whether he was wrongly convicted, right? I don't think that's the question that he, he could be innocent. Is a, a probation sentence, right? With no incarceration, acceptable. Is it satisfactory? And is 18 months satisfactory? And if he breaches all of the conditions of his sentence, he will only spend 17 months in jail. Is that satisfactory? More so, is it sufficient to act as a deterrent? Is it sufficient to act as a deterrent to others? You know how it is to get hit in your head with a hammer repeatedly, again and again and again and again and again with a hammer? I want you to read these texts because I can't read these texts, man. I, I only could say we men need prayers because I'm sure these are men who text, who text these, right? All right. Uh, but I want you to put it on the record. To, so him and woman can understand and appreciate what men, how men see women, right? And then I want to, because you went looking for the Minister of Social Services, and I want to put that yeah, also juxtaposed. Yeah. Okay. So here's the first text. Well, I think 18 months on probation is acceptable if you are repentant. Because you feel sorry after you bludgeon somebody after that. Let me tell you why we're going to 
pause for a moment to talk about that because that feeling of guilt sometimes you can't even control that like that's reflexive mm. you can't even control that i got caught i feel guilty yeah like you this idea of, i look at him i looked at him and he looked repentant mm. sometimes the person can't even control that they mean to look repentant Anyway, look at the next text. Further, how was he going to pay the restitution if he is still sitting in jail? Answer that. Rest, Aaron, restitution constitute medical bills. They not a medical bill in Nassau only cost four thousand dollars. Getting say what? What? What could four thousand dollars do? What? What could four thousand dollars do? How long on the private ward at PMH will four thousand dollars last you? I guess she could sue. Read the next text, Aaron. Right, oh. Women need to stop doing that? The one before that. See, the only thing will cause a man to do that is if the woman says she Jew. If the woman says that she is engaged in intimacy with other people, someone else, or if she insults him and his manhood. No man. And then what he said after that? What did the text said after that? Women need to stop doing that. People need to behave better. People generally need to stop being so abusive with other people. Empathy. Like I said it earlier on the other side of the break, hey, 5% empathy. 5% empathy is all we need. Um, this particular story, though, is extremely troubling. Um, both... The, the sentence itself and the public response to said sentence. Got a caller. Good morning, caller. You are on the Guardian Radio AM on the clock mashup. Good morning again. Morning, morning. Listen, Aaron, I'm, I'm listening to the great my heart. I didn't hear nothing about this. You know, I, I don't understand what it is. Somebody, especially during the really start talking about women, speaking with somebody else or or insulting a man's manhood. If I can insult your manhood for you to so much as raise your hand to me, mm -hmm. then you don't have a manhood. You're not a man. You should not be in that category. Now, I will... I can, I can understand if, I'm, if I upset you, then I upset you with words. I did not upset you with my fist. So you can come back at me with words. What happened? Use your words. Yes. You I, understand I, me? I you can you. use your... I find that words can hurt you more, far more, and in some cases deeper than any fist. That's the, but that's the point, right? That's the point right there. I, I appreciate absolutely what you're saying. Look here, if I'm only talking to you and I talk to you hard, walk away. Thank you. If I'm not threatening to hit you or if I have not hit you, walk away. Walk away. I think it's you important know. for men to create space for other men, right? Like... When your boy have to walk away because there's nothing else he could do reasonable in the space with the partner, with the woman, he got to walk away. He needs to be able to go to his boys or his brethren, right, and sit down and cry if he has to. You know, there's a gentleman that I hear come on the show from time to time that speaks about um, reason men and boys. Mm -hmm. and he is an advocate for that. And I hear him talking the other day about having men and boys get together, you know, and have men come out here and be um, like a big brother to some boys who don't have fathers and stuff like that. But I, I know of his situation personally, and I can tell you he doesn't check for his son, but he's out here bringing out a man to check for theirs. So I think it starts from within the home. I know the situation went on, and yes, you were out there helping others, but yours is going out there with yours is there without you. Yeah, you understand. So all of this starts from within the home. I know I put my big effort into raising my son, and sometimes I feel like he's a little too soft because he's allowed the woman to push him over a little bit. But I would rather that happen than to him raise his hand to her. Yeah. You know, because she's not harming him in any which way. She's just being a little rough. But hello, you're not going to raise your hand to no woman. Because always remember, I'm a woman. I'm your mother. Do you want to see that happen to me? Is what I usually say. So pause Dances, right there. No, ma'am. Pause, pause right there. That's the space right there. 
Mm. When you say to the gentleman, I'm a woman, your mother is a woman, would you raise your hand to your mother, right? Mm -hmm. That's the point of exploration because a lot of men are still living with trauma they experienced as boys, trauma connected to their relationship with their mothers. Now, I am not justifying any behavior. I'm trying to, to put a finger on an area I think we need to pay attention to. And we as women, right, we do not owe a man a thing because of our relationship with him, right? But we have to acknowledge that we owe each other, right? We owe each other the space to be dignified, right? We, we owe each other empathy. We owe each other compassion, right? We don't owe each other sex or intimacy, but we owe each other compassion and empathy. And I want to say to women, right, that be careful because a lot of men are dealing with unprocessed trauma from their relationships with their mothers. And yes. th there's nothing that, that could justify him striking you, but there's also nothing that justifies you striking at the heart of him and attempting to hit him with a blow. And you know how heavy that blow is emotionally or psychologically. Yeah. You know, and so... I'm not saying that, that men are warranted to hit women in that situation. I'm saying, though, that it suggests that we have a lot of individual and collective work to do with but each I have, other. I have one more thing I wanted to ask. Yeah. You remember years ago, there was a lady that beat a man with a hammer. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to her, is she still locked up in jail or, or she get away like this one get away too? Because yeah. I, I, I want to know. Because I remember a situation where a lady beat a man to death with a hammer after he abused her for so long okay. as, as a retaliation. So I'm trying to figure out how this one get to walk and what happened to her. I got you. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. I'm going to ask some questions on that. Thank you very much. I can let you read all the texts today because some of these texts vex me. And I, and I as a man, I, I can't read them, Aaron. So I, I let you do that. You, you tend to deal with this type of pressure all the time, and I'm not used to it. Right. But I, I, I still want us to read the, the parts of the article from, from paper. Yes, and also I want to talk about, um, looks like Clint gone for true. They ain't having no more press conferences. And I want to know if, if are we going to get answers from the cabinet or, or, or what's going to happen? But Clint gone. I don't know if you noticed, but Clint gone for sure. He ain't, he ain't, we, we, he ain't look like he coming back. He look, Clint gone. I mean, he'd been, hadn't he been assigned a long time? Yeah, but it's clear now. You're seeing, you're seeing evidence that Clint gone. Why, why would you say that? Because now I, I try to be, I won't read that text, but see, so you're suggesting that, that the if Clint was there, the Prime Minister, we will have some press conference. And, Clint like talk. And the communication sector is unable to host it's full complement of press briefings because of the absence of Clint, Clint Watson? We still don't know what the declaration thing is <laughs> for members of parliament. Clint gone. You thought Clint was going to tell us that, eh? I thought he's going to say something. He's going to say that there's going to be two different opinions from the prime minister, so one for he's foreigners saying, and then one for the local people. He's going to say something like he, that. Because he's entertaining. Because yes. he's an entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we can't talk about that. No, no, this move... <laughs> And Dwight come back and studio. Huh? Oh they no, are. no, no, we got the point. We yes, got no, point. Forget that. We said they are point. have they they are having press conferences. They have changed the mode of presentation From weekly to make it more effective and efficient. I don't understand what that right? means. Right? And so cabinet yes. We stopped that long time. No, we that that was the purpose of the press. The purpose of the whole press machinery was to Yeah, we're talking to Dwight now. No, he's, he's instructed. The, no, the yeah. voice of reason. The voice of reason. Right. No, no, we go back and forth. Go ahead. Um, and so, no, we, we get the article. They haven't, com they haven't discontinued press briefings, but they've discontinued. What they said they've discontinued is cabinet briefings, right? And so my question is why you had to say you discontinuing cabinet briefings when all you had to do was fold them in to the general press briefing. 
Oh. So do, do, they don't want the media to come down there? So, so, who, so do, don't go to the Office of the Prime Minister anymore? So that's what it is? Press brief is on so Wednesday. So only go on Wednesday. And don't go gather and wait to see um, the celebrities come out of the Office of the Prime Minister. But why can't we go? Why can't the media go? So they're restricting access to the compound? Like if I have a pressing question, you, you I can't go. You see how you're going down this rabbit hole? Oh, you only go on Wednesday. Yeah. Dear well, Bahamas, don't have no pressing issues until <laughs> Monday or Tuesday. I love when Dwight comes to the work and say, no, you got to say it this way. No, no, that's not it. The, the voice of reason. I appreciate the voice of reason. Okay. It, 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 it forces us to ensure that we balance. I want to know now. So you could only go. I still say Clint gone. To the OP. I mean, that he was gone. We're not even questioning that. Yeah. I should like when he come on and, and just talk. He's entertaining. He's an entertainer. You don't like entertainment? Not in my press briefing. Oh, okay. You don't be entertained. I can entertain by myself. The, I'm, by a, the press I'm, a, I'm a comedian. I could find humor in anything. I don't but need you I, to entertain I used to me. like the cabinet briefing. Sir. But the, the point is this. Are they restricting access to policy makers? We'll analyze and see how the new format is. And, and, and is it better? Because they're trying to make it more efficient. We do a two-hour show on Wednesday. We ain't going to never get to the office of the OPM in time for the briefing. We, we talk about it on Wednesday, on Thursday. We have to go. We, can, we ain't going to be able to get there. We don't have to go any place. We just re-report whatever uh, the other people do. Anyway, that, that's an aside. So now, what happens? What if there is a pressing issue and I want to speak to a cabinet minister? Call and make an appointment. With whom? The press secretary. So I need to speak to a cabinet minister, please. These guys said that they were putting on a hat. I, I enjoyed, remember in Independence, they had a, a mask, and I think they had a hat decorating competition. I thought this was going to be good news. Because for me, hat means honesty, accountability, and transparency. And they keep saying that they're putting on the hat. Right. Anyway. I see we have a caller here, but then we still haven't read into the record uh, from the Minister of Social Services. Well, services you know. We haven't and I read want this to article. That. Yes, but let's go to the caller first, because the caller, we need to have the, hear their opinions. Go ahead, caller. Good morning, Yuri. Good morning, Aaron Green. Good morning. Uh, Clint Watson got to the selling asset manager a long time. So, um, yeah, I hear you. A few months now, uh, Mr. Nuri. Well, yeah, I remember I broke the story. Yeah, I, I, I was there. Andrew Boss, I, I, I know I brought the story up, but I was wondering why Andrew, Andrew Boss was the manager, and all suddenly he left. I don't know if you remember Aaron Green I brought up on your show. And Clint became the sudden manager, and Miss Andrew, I think, Smith became where Clint used to be. You know we're doing cheek and tongue, right? We're just making fun that there's no more press conferences. We um, wasn't actually, we wasn't actually meaning that he just left. No, uh, yeah, actually, I actually can tell, but I think for the public, for the public, I think you had a a, a text coming. No, yeah, no text. And I, I reiterated it. I reiterated oh, it that, oh, that oh, Watson okay. had left the office of the prime minister and the communication section long time to go to yeah. ZNS. Be but my, my concern when I brought up on your show, Aaron, was why suddenly. They moved Andrew Boss, who's doing a good job as a as manager, and put Clint here. That was a sudden shock to me. You know, when Clint became a manager, when he was doing a good job as second press secretariat. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I would ask a question. Was, hold on, Andrew was doing a good job at ZNS. He, matter of fact, he, could, he started to transform ZNS. Yeah, but you talk about it a long time. We didn't move yeah, right, past but I still that. wonder. I feel yeah, right there, though. It is what it is. It, it is, is what it is. is. It We're is, talking is. about the press conferences now and whether there's no more cabinet press conferences. It is what it is, anyway, but I still want Andrew back there. No, Andrew's gone. Andrew gone. Like how Clint gone, Andrew, Andrew gone. Trust me. Are you coming back, back here? No, man, listen, pol political appointees uh, accept, I mean, many of them, some of them still by generator, political appointees understand the political culture. Uh -huh. When you've been asked to move, you move. We probably left what you're talking about is African state. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about... Oh, you're not about that. Talk about that tomorrow. Possibly. Um, possibly. I'm waiting for my guests for tomorrow to confirm. We're talking about the change in the protocol or policy for press briefings. We're questioning the rationale behind combining the cabinet 
briefing, the cabinet briefing with the general press briefing on one day. Yes. Right? And we're uh -huh. questioning whether that limits the government's ability to act honestly, accountabil accountably, and transparently. We're questioning whether it limits the citizens' access to information through the media. I right? know. Uh, no. Because... Uh, no, no. We've got, no, no I know we have time to um, bring that forward. I know you're going, Eric. Because um, the government will make sure that information, dissemination of information, is not through their traditional TV and radio. Um, if you go online... You, you know, you're not answering the question, Pumpkin Eater, because what I'm talking about is a restriction of access. It's a restriction of access. I don't, I'm not quite sure what you were selling there, but I ain't buying it, right? So now you're going to have your general press briefing and your cabinet briefings on the same day? Have you expanded the amount of time given to the press briefing? We shall see when Wednesday come, and um, they do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's read that, because I, I, we also have uh, a guest coming in to talk about what's happening on the weekend, and I, I want to give him the opportunity. That's Dave Williams is going to be here, right? All right, so first article, chronic bias remains against women. UN report 25% of people feel it's fine for men to beat wives. That's the Minister of Social Services mm -hmm. article. And then the second one, Sands accuses government of victimizing women. Here's, I'll read from the article. Citing the urgent need to combat a, quote, severe chronic bias against women, close quote. Minister of Social Services Obi Wilchcombe said yesterday the government is committed to advancing women in the Bahamas. He was responding to a recent report by the UN... United Nations Development Program. The report reveals a chronic bias against women globally over the last decade, Wilchcombe said in a statement. The report, which was launched on Monday, states, quote, no improvement in the level of prejudice shown against women over the past decade, close quotes. The report also states that half of the people in the world still believe that men make better leaders than women, and more than 40% believe that men make better business executives than women. He added, the report also revealed that a staggering 25% of people believe it is justified for a man to beat his wife. The report argues that these biases drive hurdles faced by women, manifesting in a dismantling of women's rights in many parts of the world with movements against gender equality gaining traction and in some countries, a surge of human rights violations. I'm going to drop in the article. The, my ministry, ex, this is a quote from the minister, my ministry accepts the UNDP report that emphasizes that governments have a crucial role to play in shifting gender social norms from adopting parental leave policies that have changed perceptions around care work responsibilities to labor market reforms that have led to change in beliefs for women in the workplace, he said. You want me to continue? Yeah, I might continue. All right. The direction of the UNDP gender team felt that it is important to start recognizing the economic value of unpaid care work responsibilities to labor market reforms that have led to a, to a change in beliefs around women in the workforce. Quote, oh, go on. No, I, I wanted it to be read into the record mostly because uh, it seems as if women are under attack, mm -hmm. right? And I wanted us to have this juxtapose in the, the article with the gentleman who, who sorry, gentleman, the monster who attacked a woman with the hammer mm -hmm. and, 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 and the sentence he received, it seemed to be there's a double standard when it comes to women. And, 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 and that has been uh, permeated throughout our society in general. And I just wanted to have that juxtaposed to, so people could appreciate what I'm saying. All right. You want me to continue reading? Um, no, this, oh. uh, there's another article there, right? Right. Well, this one is in today's Tribune, right? Yeah. It is Sands accuses government of victimizing women. Okay, let's see what that's about. Free National Movement Chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands accused the government of systematically terminating women civil servants, calling it an example of the Davis administration's assault on women. These comments came after the Nassau Guardian recently reported Immigration Director Katura Ferguson is alleged to be placed on leave and then retired with former Director of Immigration William Pratt set to take the post. Officials, including Alfred Sayers, the new immigration minister, did not confirm the move. And we don't have to go into detail. You can always go by 
uh, the, the, the today's newspaper, Tribune. Today's Tribune and, and get details for that. Right after I you just, buy today's Guardian. Well, of course, you got to buy the Guardian. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get the, the good, good juicy news. But um, I just want to say that it seems that women are under attack and women's group need to move, uh, become mobile in terms of defending their own. And it doesn't seem as if they're doing such. And that being juxtaposed, we have a men's group coming in shortly. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we'll talk about that. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. But I want to read this um, in the meantime. Um, it says, calling all junior and senior high school students, you could win a brand new iPad for the new year. Enter the, Pl the Plato Alpha Design Essay Competition. All you have to do is write a strong, convincing essay on the topic. What does going digital mean to you? For junior high school, your word limit is 1,000 words. For senior high school students, your word limit is 1,500 words. To enter, email your essay along with your name, school, and grade level, as well as your parents' contact information. Email alpha at platoalpha.com by Friday, September 22nd. The winners will be announced on Guardian Radio on September 29th. The winner for each category walks away with a brand new iPad. It's the Plato Alpha Essay Competition powered by Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. So you have an opportunity to have your child uh, participate in this for junior high school and senior high school students. An opportunity to win a brand new iPad uh, just for just saying what does going digital mean to you? I think that's easy uh, to take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely yeah, good stuff. The, well, the producer just stepped out. No, I know thing. I'll go get our guest. Well, you go get the guest. Let me read these texts. Yes, while read you the text once I get a guest. Um, and so these are texts following up in the conversation that we've been having in this part of the hour. Uh, insulting a person's manhood is verbal abuse, Aaron. Yes, I, I, I said that. And the caller proved the point of the text. Uh, words hurt. I said that too. Women need to understand the repercussion of their words and need to fall in line. I did not say that. I did say they, they need to understand the repercussion of their words, but I did not say they need to fall in line. Another text, why do women feel exempted from physical reproach? Saying you should never raise your hand to a woman is like saying go beat a man instead. I mean, no, it's not. Dear text, I just want to stick a pin there. It's not the same thing. That makes men want to hit a woman more because there is pent up anger because women don't want to be accountable for their behavior. No, I think, again, I think we sort of address that, particularly with men who are dealing with unprocessed trauma with their mothers. Mm -hmm. I's man now, so you can't continue to subjugate me because I's man now. Men fall in line because they are checked physically. Men should fall in line because it is the right thing to do, not because they are afraid of being beaten for not towing the line. So women need to be checked physically so that they can watch their mouths and not verbally abuse men. Their texter, no. That's, that's not the logic at all. We threaten men with violence and fear to compel them to fall in line, and you think that's what's missing? That women are not falling in line because we're not threatening them with enough violence and fear? Aaron, I find some conversations tend to be uneasy, uncomfortable to have. And uh, this is one of the conversations I, I wanted to get out, even if I had difficulties expressing it by just saying that this needed to be spoken about. Let me read this last part quickly as we go to the break. Another text, I want to know what aim these gender rights activists are trying to achieve. You can't eradicate biases and you can't eradicate violence against anyone. Moreover, why do they want this to happen for women and men? Hmm. Why do we want to eradicate biases that lead to unnecessary violence in our communities? I don't know why. Maybe we'll discover it on the next side of this break. Yes. And anyway, we'll be right back as we have our Man Down Mash Up Wednesdays, where we combine two shows to have uh, analyze the news and have a great discussion. On the other side, we have Dave Williams. He's here because we, I guess he's going to have a couple events happening this weekend. This weekend? Excellent. Next weekend. Okay, no, we're always excited to welcome Dave here, and he brought a guest with him, so we'll go in detail as to what we can do to encourage his movement in regards to empowering men. But we'll be right back after this brief message. Uh. 
Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Welcome back to Garden Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. And of course, Aaron Green is with me. And in studio, we have Dave Williams from the International Men's Day Committee. And of course, he brought one of my distant cousins, Mr. Cox, with him. And they'll be talking about what's going to be happening next week, right, on, in terms of uh, events uh, promoting men in general. It, it seems, is that odd that we women to be talking about women's rights and, and transition to men's Right. No, we're talking about eradicating violence, right? So it's a it's an easy marriage, it's an easy transition. We're talking about eradicating violence, and that means that we can talk to men about programs that help men shift culture and be better men. Shift. Let's say be better men. They're good men. Shift culture. Uh, no such thing we're talking about the boy who beat the girl with the hammer. Uh-huh. And even then, even then, we give him space for redemption, right? Even mm. then. We, we, we pause and we say, look here, let's determine whether something has driven you this are man. You forgiving to, woman. And I'm saying we can forgive him for beating the woman. What I'm saying is, is that he may have a psychological or an emotional issue in his life. And if that is not resolved, then he will always respond with violence to anyone. But let's go to Dave. Dave. Yes. What is the International Men's Day Committee, first of all? Right. And then we'll go on to uh, what's happening. Okay. International Men's Day Bahamas Committee, as we know, is an right, right into the mic, sir. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's a group of men that focus on promoting positive male role models and celebrating positive contributions made by men in our society while trying to improve gender relations and equality to eliminate discrimination against men. It is also our hope and goal to ensure safer and better communities and encourage young men to become leaders in society. And so we have partnered with me is actually our president, Mr. Keith Cox, one of the founding members of the International Men's Day Bahamas Committee, um, as we seek to share about the events. But as you have known, and um, first I want to thank Guardian. I was here yesterday and with um, Minister Lang. And right away, I, there's the power of radio. I got a call from another pastor talking about this boys program. And I'm, I, have to, I have to go by Uriah Makfi School to talk to a group of young men. Mm-hmm. And he called me and he said, Dave, I want to be a part of this program. And he's on his way right now as we talk to speak to um, Uriah Makfi School to boys. And so IMD is seeking to bridge the gap for our boys, for our men. Um, we focus on a lot of positive things to see how can we work together. We're not here to compete. We're here to complement each other. We support um, initiatives, as you both know, in terms of our gender-based violence programs. We have persons well-trained in that. And so we're seeking to encourage more as, of us as men to be better fathers, better priests, prophet kings, more, more role models. And we're encouraging our men to get back what we call in the rightful place that's in the home. Because I believe that if we can have more men taking the lead in the home, we have a better family structure. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I, I, I'm mad at that. I, I, I just beg for their presence. Uh, right. I, I just want their presence. Yes. We need here to help. That's it. Yeah, children want... The parents, they right. want to be with them. Yes, yes. You know. So let's go to Mr. Cox. Mr. Cox, as president, what are you promoting exactly? Well, this week coming up, we, are, we have two things on our agenda. On the 19th, we have fathers take your sons to school. What we're trying to do is get the fathers to play a more active role in their children's school life. All right, um... 
fathers go to work in the morning. They don't know how the kids get to school. Normally, it'll be the wife or some other siblings, or they'll walk to school. Mm -hmm. Then in the afternoon, when they come from work, the kids are probably almost down. You don't get that quality time. And so in that space of that school time, in that space of that school time, you don't get the fathers to meet the teachers, because I've been to PTA meetings over and over, and the percentage of fathers or male figures in those meetings is just like maybe, uh, to be generous, 5%. Whew. Yeah. And so the fathers are not playing active. Now, if our children are in a sporting event, the some of us will, will come. Up, yeah. But, you know, I've seen all kind of bumper stickers saying... Um, Baseball moms, soccer moms, but you don't see baseball, baseball dad. dads and stuff like that. So we're trying to get fathers to play a more active role in, in your the child's life in the school. A lot of things happen in the school that the fathers don't know. Let me ask you a quick, quick question. Mm -hmm. You think if the people making the bumper stickers made more baseball dad, soccer dad, girl dad stickers, the men would have them. Is it a matter of they're not making them, or is it that men don't see themselves in that role and don't demand them? No, no, no why would you make a sticker if you don't, if you don't show for it? I can make 10,000 um, soccer dads and only three, three show up. And What's then, the sense in that? Then when they are sold, it's because women bought them and gave them to the men's <laughs> in, men in their lives, right? Well, you don't, don't want to portray a lie. You want to be active, so the, you'll see the soccer mom thing, and they're they actually watching the soccer match or the baseball match. Yeah. So this is going to be September 19th? September 19th. And where is it going to be exactly? Every school in Nassau, we have reached out to. We reach out to the Ministry of Education to give the father's permission to go onto the premises. Mm -hmm. Public and private? Public and private. All right. And so we're not going to interrupt any curriculum that's going on in the schools. Go there before school starts. Go to 8, 8.30, walk your son to school, go meet the teacher. Some of the programs, I've seen one recently, it may have been last school year, where there was a breakfast organized. So fathers came, and they had sauce in the morning with their, with their children as they brought them to school. And there's an area set up, and they sat down and had breakfast before the school day started, and then they left for school to start. God, did you say that? On Aaron Billy School, we are now partnering with Aaron Billy School and Grace Community Church, and we're doing that. We're doing a breakfast in the morning. So you could come there and sit down with your son and have breakfast. Mm -hmm. We were going to provide the lunch for you, the little, you know, the little regular tuna grits, little stuff yeah. like that. And you sit down with your son, and if the teacher passed by, you have a little word to say, how's my son doing? Is he okay? Is he behaving? You have any problem? You understand? Mm -hmm. It's not like a... Report card day no. or something like that. We call, you know, report card day is crazy days in school, right? Yeah, yeah. If, if we could remember, right? We never like report card day, and especially we don't want our fathers to carry it. Unless we you understand, we look at some good grades. If you're getting some bad grades, yeah, you want your father to take you. So you want, you want to do positive stuff. So we're going to be doing that at Aaron Bailey. Awesome. So um, just the fathers to play a more active role in, mm -hmm. in their kids' life, especially the boys, man. That 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the morning with your child can start their day off differently, man. Yeah. It, it, it's so important. Yeah. It, it, it is. You know, it is. And this is just something, Aaron, we're trying to... All right. So September 19th September is the fathers <laughs> to school, fathers school day, right? Yes, yes. What's happening this weekend? Well, we, don't, we don't have nothing planned in particular this weekend, okay. but the men's march, we got, we got to let folks know on the 24th of this month. September? Yes. Okay. we at Christie Park, 3 p.m. We're looking forward to the men's march. We want, we want all the youth groups, all the men's group to come out and be a part of the march. It was led by the um, Royal Bahamas Defense Force last year, along, along with the commissioner, the Commodore, sorry. Yeah. And it was followed also by the acting commissioner of prison, Don Clare, along with his band and some of their recruits. And so we're hoping to get the same thing. In addition to it, we're looking for the support of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. And so we want to invite as much bands out, as much uh, we are inviting the Pathfinders, Boys Brigade, marching bands, whatever community bands, we're inviting them out. We're inviting all the men out. But we have a press conference tomorrow too, and so I'm inviting men to join us 11 o'clock tomorrow, Christy Park. We're looking forward to having a press conference when we'll be able to share more information. And so, and also, next week starts a series of 
uh, testing for prostate, prostate cancer because we partnered with Dr. Robin Roberts okay. for us too. And so we um, want to maybe keep you up to date. Yes, sir. Can, you could give out those dates. So if you listen to me, man, this is not a, uh, what am I going to say? The conventional way of testing. You using, not, you're using the new blood test method yes, to test yes, for prostate yes, cancer. Yeah, yes, yes. You, awesome. uh, you take your blood, so you don't have to worry about bending over, stoop over, yada, yada. Okay, you just come and take a blood yeah. test. We're going to take all the information from you, and we will send information. You say, well, your prostate is good or it's high. In fact, I just had mine done this week. So pause. Let's pause right there. Let's I want to hear about that experience. No, no, no. No, you don't. Let's reiterate it. <laughs> Gentlemen, women, now that you... Y'all tune in to women. Right. There is a new prostate cancer test available. Right. It is not invasive. It does not require an uh, uh, external probe right. into the anus. Right. Just be real about it. Mm -hmm. It is not invasive. It's nothing to, to be scared about men. It's a blood test. You don't have blood no test. prostate. Pardon? You don't have no prostate. But let me go back. But I don't like to. I don't like to lay <laughs> prostrate. <Mr>. But that's <laughs> is what I say. And let's go through the process. Um, you just went there. You registered. Yeah, so just registered. And it's, how long did it take? Minutes. Well, well it's according to the crowd, right? So according to the crowd, how many men show up? Then, of course, you got to join the queue. Yeah, but I mean, from when they do the triage, you, you how long did it take? You'll take it on two weeks. You'll get the results. Two weeks. In two weeks, you'll get your results. And they email it to you or they text you? What, how we, do they send an email to you. Okay, that's easy enough. Yeah, it's easy enough. Okay. Go, go and take a prick. Yes, give us your ID. We took some information from you and do it. So the dates are September 19th. If you're in the eastern area, um, Yamokro, um, anywhere the eastern world, it's at the Elizabeth Estate Clinic. Okay. Okay, so you go and test. So we, do we I need to bring an ID? Yes, bring an ID, of course. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, on, on the 21st, we go at the Flamingo Gardens um, Clinic. On the 26th, we go in the South Beach Clinic. And then on the 28th, we go in the F Flamingo Gardens um, Clinic, so Fleming Street Clinic. So what we're doing is try hitting east, west, north, and so So we're trying to eliminate the excuses you're not coming in our areas. Is there a charge for this? No, it's absolutely free. It's free too? It's absolutely yes. free. Just bring your ID, just take, take your prick, and, and then it's just email a blood, it? Yeah. Just, just it's just a, a blood, blood test. Blood, blood. So no you, invasive probes. No invasive probes. You don't have to be afraid. Um, early detection is best. All of us know that. Early mm -hmm. detection is best. So on a scale of 1 to 10, your prostate normal test normally is around 4. All right. If you're reading a little, like around nine, then you know your prostate is stuck. You go to and we'll send you to a urologist. Yeah. You say, well, he put you on some tablets to shrink the, um, the, the, the swelling. Yeah. And because all prostate, will, if you leave it and linger around, then it turns into cancer. You don't want to wait for that to turn into cancer. And you could take a couple, a little medication and shrink the prostate. Or the next phase is go in there and have it scraped. Yeah. So it's like a callus. So you go in there and get it get scraped down to normal. But there's lots of ways. Well, there's a few ways. I, in fact, I spoke with um, Dr. Pinto yesterday. We had a little discussion on that, and he advised me about all these things. Give me the dates again on where, where please. So on the September 19th, it's the Elizabeth Estate Clinic. For any, anybody who lives in the eastern area, on the 21st, it's the Flamingo Gardens Clinic. On the 26th, it's the South Beach Clinic. And on the 28th is the Fleming Street Clinic. And this, 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 is, this is all arranged by the OSTO movement. A lot of men, we shy, we don't like going to the doctor for no. some other reason. For some reason, some of us don't like going to the doctor. For me, for one, I go into the doctor and the doctor says, whip it out and I whip it out. He say, bend over, I bend over. I, 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 I am one of the few. You know, and that does a regular checkup on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And so for those who are shy about these things, it's an elimination process. Just come and get it done, man. Yeah. And remember, it's a blood test this time. It's a blood test. There's a new method for testing. Yes, new method. Absolutely. And we appreciate the concern, we, uh, the, the barriers, right, that the old testing method represented for men. It was a big, massive Barrier, and quite frankly, it's taken too long to develop a blood test. Understanding how many men 
refuse to get checked because of the only method available. So please be emphasized. There's a new mode of testing available. It's not invasive. It's, it does not require an anal probe. Mm -hmm. Come out and get tested. Is, is it the leading? If it's, not, if it's not the leading, it's one of the highest uh, causes of death. Yes, from cancers in the body. We have 30 seconds. Anything else you want to mention? Yes, yeah, so I just want to remind persons, fathers, take your son to school. So coming up next week, Tuesday the 19th, we have dropped off letters to numerous schools. Like um, Keith said, take a picture of it, 4336917, 4336917. Send your picture, sit down, have breakfast, have lunch, or even read a book to the students, right? This is what we're promoting for next week, Tuesday. We're encouraging us much. And for those of you who don't have a father, Get a father figure. If you don't have a child or a young child in school or grandchild, adopt a child. Will you all have mentors available on site for students that don't have fathers able to come? Well, we didn't discuss it, but 4336917, if there's a school, need someone, call me and we can make the arrangement. Good. It's been Guardian Radio AM. Thank you very much, Mr. Cox. Thank you very much, Williams. We'll see you when you come back again. Thank you very much. Day.